You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy-to-implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis, from Bright Futures Counseling. Do you ever have a kiddo pop into your office last minute and you need an activity to do quickly? Or do you ever wish you had access to hundreds of school counseling resources at your fingertips? Well, my Impact School Counselor membership is for you. Inside Impact, you get access to hundreds of resources sorted by topic, tier, season, or monthly lesson plans. Simply log on, find what you need, download it, and use it with your students right away. You also get access to our community where you can meet like-minded school counselors to troubleshoot tough cases, get inspired, and collaborate with your colleagues. Not only that, we also know how important it is to stay on top of your professional development. That's why we offer live quarterly trainings on hot topics that you need most. Impact is designed to make your counseling life easier. I know you're super busy. That's why I've made it super simple to access everything you need in one place. This way you can spend your time and energy doing what you love the most, helping kiddos. If you're looking for a one-stop shop for all of your counseling needs so you don't have to worry about searching on different sites, paying for things here and there, you can find everything you need on demand in one place in Impact. Head over to stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact to watch a sneak peek video behind the scenes of what all is included in the membership. Again, that's stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact to get started today. I can't wait to help you make an impact. Hey there, thanks for listening to another episode of School Counseling Simplified. So guys, this month we've been talking all about data. You know this is a topic that I'm super passionate about and I want to help counselors feel more comfortable with. So I have a quick episode for you today. Today I just want to share five things you didn't think to include on an end of the year report. Now, hopefully you were able to attend me earlier this month in my live training where I talked all about how to use an end of the year report to increase your impact and advocate for your role. If you didn't catch it, no worries. Stick around. I'm always doing free trainings like this and I hope you can attend the next one with us. But let's talk a little more about that. So just a little synopsis for those of you who couldn't make it. An end of the year report is exactly what it sounds like. It's a report you're doing at the end of the year to share two things. You're showing the services that you've provided. So the number of hours you spent doing class lessons, small groups, the number of students you've seen, the number of lessons taught, things like that. And you're also sharing student progress data. So you're looking at things like self-assessments or behavior surveys and looking at the results to see how students have changed as a result of your counseling sessions. Then you share all of this with your administration, who's like, oh my gosh, you're amazing, we love you, here's a raise. (laughs) Just kidding, well, maybe. But anyways, the end of the year report's amazing. I'm super passionate about it. Um, I'll link to a couple episodes in the show notes here of other um, episodes I've done where I really like break down what's included on the end of the year report. But for those of you who've been listening for a while, you may be like, yeah, I'm already doing an end of the year report. Why is she talking about this again? But I wanna tell you five things you did not thing to include on your end of the year report. So these are things that are uh, less obvious. Okay, so let's dive in. First up, meetings attended. So we talk a lot about services provided and a lot of the um, you know hours spent in direct counseling services like small groups, class lessons, and individual sessions. But what about all of those meetings that you've attended? What about all of the hours spent in IEP meetings, in 504 meetings? SST meetings. I had a school where we called them SSP meetings. You know all the acronyms, right? But think about all the time spent in parent meetings, in teacher meetings. All of these hours matter, and they matter for two reasons. Number one, you're showing your administration or your board or your parents or whoever you're sharing this report with, your stakeholders essentially. You're showing them, look, this is how much time I'm putting in to this profession. I, you know, really take your child's success seriously. We're going to all these meetings to ensure their success. That's one thing you're showing. But then you're also showing, look at all this wasted time in meetings that I could be using in individual counseling. Maybe you only had, you know, 10 hours spent for individually counseling that quarter, but then you had 20 hours in meetings. Well, hello, I think everyone could look at that and say, well, we need our counselor doing more counseling and less meetings. Let's get that happening. So that's what I mean when I say advocate for your role. Use the data, show it to your principal. It's hopefully a no-brainer for everyone. Everyone wants to help the kids, right? And then you can be doing more of what you need to be doing and less time sitting in meetings. 
So meetings attended, number one. Number two, trainings and conferences attended. This is a great place to brag on yourself and say, look what I'm doing for professional development. You know, I attended our state conference. I attended the Ask a National conference. I went to this one training. I did this online certification. Um, also, if you are an impact member, we do quarterly live trainings where you can get professional development certificates. And if you attend my free trainings, I usually offer these PD certificates as well. But impact members, you're getting four times a year this personalized, specialized counselor training, as well as our summer summit, which is right around the corner. There is training um, for that as well. So these are all ways that you can do professional development that's counselor specific. That's the important part here, right? It's specifically designed for counselors by counselors um, and this is just an example of trainings or conferences that you've attended, and that's some data that you definitely don't want to leave out on your end-of-the-year report. You're showing your stakeholders that you're a lifelong learner and that you're constantly investing in yourself and in your profession. Okay, number three, parent-teacher feedback of your overall program. So I talk a lot about self-assessment data and about behavior surveys. Now, behavior surveys are when you send parents and teachers a survey to uh, monitor the child's behavior. So what behaviors were they exhibiting pre-counseling? What behaviors are they exhibiting after counseling? This is a different survey. I'm talking about a program feedback survey. So send a quick survey. It can literally be five questions, Google Forms, type it up quickly to parents and teachers, asking them for feedback about your program this year. What they liked, what they didn't like, what they wanted to see more of, are they clear on what you're doing? Do they feel like their child or student has improved as a result of your services? Just a quick survey. Go ahead and send that out to them. That res data is going to be so powerful, right? That's something you might not think to include in an end of the year report, but those are some great findings to share. Like 80% of uh, parents, you know, thought their child benefited as a result of my classroom counseling lessons. Four out of five teachers thought the referral process was easy, something like that. Or if you're getting not so great feedback, now's the time to tweak it for next year. Number four, improved attendance data. So a lot of times we're thinking about, like I said, with the student progress data, we're looking at the data we've collected through self-assessments and behavior surveys. But what about attendance data? What if you do an attendance group or even just an engaging group or an engaging set of lessons that's incentivizing kids to come to school more? Or maybe you're you know, doing an initiative with parents to remind them um, of the importance of attendance and to getting to school on time. You can track your school's attendance data, you know, do some interventions, and then later say, wow, look how our, improve our attendance data has improved as a result of my counseling program. Last one for you guys, number five, similar to attendance data, referral data. So you can talk to your principal and say, why are kids getting sent to the office? What are these behavior referrals we're seeing? Then you can form some groups and some lessons and some things around that, and then you can take the post data and say, wow, now look, all of our discipline referrals have decreased 30% as a result of my counseling services. These are things you could include on your end of the year report. Now, those last two things, the attendance and the referral data, you may be thinking, um, it's May, I wasn't tracking these, I can't include it. There's you some ideas for next year for things to get started with right away. Or maybe you've been tracking those things like absentmindedly, but you haven't, you know, compiled them in a clean, concise place. That's where your end of the year report could help you do that. Okay, guys, I hope you found this episode helpful and inspiring. I will link to some other episodes about end of the year report and my end of the year report template for you guys in the show notes so you can check it out and get started with yours today. If you are creating an end of the year report, please tag me at Bright Futures Counseling on Instagram. I would love to see it and reshare it. Um, obviously, you can you know put some little white out or blur on top of like any personal information for your school, but I would just love to see that you guys are doing this. So please tag me at Bright Futures Counseling for an end of the year report. You never know, I might randomly select someone to give a free coffee to or something, Starbucks gift card. So Thank you guys. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. If your school year is winding down soon, happy summer. And if you got a few more weeks left, hang in there. You totally got this. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.